How to be a true professional in your cleaning business. Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. Well, you know, a lot of times uh, you'll see cleaning, cleaning companies that just don't appear to be very professional. Either it's uh, their, their general appearance, how they carry themselves, how they talk, how they act, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's very important for us to, to you know, be a true professional, you know, for your cleaning company. And one of the things that you do want to do is uh, do what you promise. That's probably the number one thing because too many times uh, cleaning companies will make a lot of promises just to get an account. Uh, then once they got the account, they don't really d truly deliver on what they promised. And, you know, that's, that's an issue. So uh, don't do that. You know, do what you promise. If you're telling people that you're going to be doing certain things, then go ahead and follow through and do so. Um, Another thing is, like I say, appearance. Um, you know, you, you don't want uh, to pull up in front of an account with a, with a beat up old vehicle uh, that's all rusted out, uh, probably no lettering on it, and it just looks horrible. You know, that's all about your image too. So, you know, make sure that uh, the vehicle that you're using is, uh, you know, uh, uh, looks, looks nice and you got some nice uh, uh, you know, either you got a wrap on there or you got some type of lettering so people know who you are, how to get a hold of you. And not only just your, your vehicle, but make sure all your equipment looks uh, clean and new. Um, you know, we've had equipment for, you know, 15 years and uh, we take care of it, we clean it and make sure that it's always taken care of. And, uh, you know, it looks, uh, you know, like it's only a couple of years old. So very very important you know that really again that's all to do with your image you know you pull up to a uh, to an account you un, uh, you know take your equipment out of the vehicle and here you got a bunch of equipment that's just splattered full of, of dirt and dust and everything else um, it's just just that doesn't look good uh, the other thing that we got to think about for our appearance is make sure you got a uniform um, you know um, you can have a, a shirt and a pair of pants you know um, most companies will have a shirt, so I'd say at least, you know, have a shirt that's, uh, you know, a well-designed shirt with, uh, with your name on there, um, you know, so you're easy, easily identified. So a person would be able to know if they seen you from a distance that, okay, you're with XYZ Company. Uh, what we always did is we always had, uh, you know, a button-up shirt, and we always had an embroiled uh, emblem and name on, on our shirt. And also, each technician had a, a, a ID badge that they always wore, so that was very, very important. And you know, uh, generally it was uh, you know we had our shirts, and then we always asked people to wear jeans, you know, that didn't have holes in them and were tore up or dirty or uh, something like that. You know, we did make an exception uh, for when we're stripping floors. You know, you don't want to wear a nice pair of pants or a decent pair of pants when you're stripping floors because you'll get strip on and stuff like that when you kneel down to scrub the floor and, and things like that. You know, that's understandable. But uh, needless to say, your, your shirt should always be looking good, uh, making sure that uh, everybody's keeping it uh, washed and, and ironed if need be. But, you know, your appearance plays a, a big part in it. Um, something else you want to think about is think about respect. Make sure that you respect your client's uh, property and, um, you know, make sure that none of your employees smoke on the, on the, uh, at the account. Uh, that, that again is just sending a, a bad message. So, you know, that was always our policy, no smoking at, uh, at any account. You know, our uh, technicians that, that did smoke, you know, they could always take a break between locations and uh, go ahead and have a cigarette then, but never on, on, our, uh, on the account, on our client's uh, property. Um, and always make sure that you always treat your, your clients with respect. Um, you know, it's always, uh, you know, address them properly, you know, yes ma'am, no sir, and so on and so forth. Um, and it just, it's just important, you know, show respect to get respect. And another thing that you want to do is you want to take pride in your work. Now, I'm sure a lot of us out here have seen cleaning companies that just don't take pride in their work. You know, they do a, a, a half-assed job. Again, you know, it's going back to where they, they're not promising, uh, they're not doing what they promised. But, you know, there, in my opinion, there's really no, uh, no reason for any of us not to have pride in our work. Um, you know, there's nothing better than, you know, 
uh, doing a complete job once you've cleaned something to see the difference and take pride in that uh, because everybody else sees the difference too. So uh, keep that in mind, you know, so always uh, have some pride in your work. Uh, always be dependable. Um, you know, if you tell uh, your client that you're going to be there on such and such a date at such and such a time, we'll be there. Uh, you know, and if you can't make it, then make sure that you contact them and let them know that you can't make it for whatever reason. But, you know, um, but, but just be dependable. You know, that's what they're counting on you for. They didn't hire a cleaning service just just so you could uh, not show up to clean their facility. So, you know, <clears throat> make sure you're dependable. Uh, we always like to be a little early, you know, five, ten minutes early. Uh, on the uh, on the days uh, and times that we had to clean accounts and or meet with somebody uh, that's that was just us we were always early and um, another thing you want to consider is always have some uh, be doing con, uh, uh, continued education uh, very very important you know although the cleaning industry doesn't uh, change a whole lot uh, very quickly uh, it's it's always good to stay abreast of any new techniques or 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 equipment that's out there in the in the field, uh, any new cleaning chemicals, uh, or any new processes. So you know, uh, make sure that you're reading up on some trade magazines. Uh, there's a lot of good information in those. Um, so you know, and most of those you can get for free. So uh, look around, and you're going to be able to find them. But continue to get some education through the trade magazines. Uh, there's many other places that you can get uh, information. Um, you could, uh, you know, read some articles, uh, just do a Google search on a, a, on a specific article and you'll be able to find uh, articles on that or videos. Um, so continue to always get uh, educated. Um, and another thing is, is always be honest. You know, uh, honesty uh, is the number one policy. Uh, the last thing you want to do is start, start to be dishonest with your clients and or anybody and then uh, try to remember what you said last time to make sure that your stories are in line. So it's so much easier just to speak honestly uh, to everybody and treat everybody with respect. And you know, lastly, I think probably another real important one is, is communication. You know, in order to be a true professional, uh, make sure that your communication lines are open. Um, we always used to ask our clients uh, what would be their preferred method for communication. You know, telephone, email, text, you know, what would it be? So by asking them up front what, what they preferred, uh, that's how we always communicated with them. And we also uh, um, asked them, you know, how frequently would they want me to uh, be in touch with them? Uh, a lot of my clients, you know, I did uh, uh, in-person walkthroughs with the clients. And some of them I did that once a month, some of them was once every two weeks, and others it was like once a quarter. But I just asked them. Uh, you know, so communication is, is, a, is one of the key issues that, that you'll deal with. Now, when we're talking communication, we have to make sure that it's from the frontline cleaner all the way up to the president of the company. You know, we have to have some kind of system in place for communication so, every, so the company itself, company-wide, can communicate and so our clients are also in the loop. Very important. We've got to have our clients, we've got to have our suppliers, you know, uh, and any, anybody else that's a part of our support team. So make sure that your communication, uh, you're using an app of some sort or you have a great system in place for communication. Uh, it will pay big dividends later. So uh, that's one of the things that I often hear from clients, um, from uh, cleaning companies uh, when they've lost the client or lost the account is part of it was due to communication, lack of communication. So anyway, so keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful, and uh, those are just some of the things that you can do to be a true professional in your cleaning business. And by doing so, you know, you're going to raise the bar, and uh, that's what we need to do. Continue to raise the bar uh, uh, on the standards uh, of, of cleaning, and let everybody else try to meet, those, meet your standards uh, and catch up to you. So and if you do that, you're going to be successful. Um, you know, you're going to be able to continue to grow your business. Your clients are going to enjoy working with you. And uh, you're, it's just going to be, you know, it's just going to be an enjoyable to do business. So, well, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and click on the like and share button. And as usual, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit click on the uh, subscribe button. And uh, uh, 
Until next time, we'll see ya.